Hi, and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Um, it's about uh, our latest release of Vital Capacity Management, and we're going to focus on uh, how to improve IT efficiency and uh, how that new release um, helps you achieve that. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Per Bauer. Uh, I'm Director of Technical Services at Help Systems, responsible for we're working primarily with the Vital Capacity Management Suite. Um, I've been with TeamQuest prior to Help Systems and now Help Systems for, for many years, uh, working with this, this solution. And, um, you know, I'm going to take you through today's session um, and take any questions that you may have at the end of that. So if we look at what we're going to cover today, um, so we have a new version of Vital Capacity Management coming out in July, um, version 2.4. Uh, but since I assume that some of the people on this call are new to our solution, I'm going to spend a few slides at the beginning uh, talking about Vital Capacity Management at large. So what is the solution capable of and how does it look like? And then we're going to focus on the new features that we've added in version 2.4 or the new capabilities. Um, and primarily we're gonna focus on the cost aspect. So how to drive efficiency in your environment. Um, and then at the end, we'll do a summary. Uh, previously, we've done these sessions uh, for each new release. We've done one, one session. Um, this time, since we've been able to, to um, get a lot of features into this new release, we've decided to split it across multiple different sessions. So this one is only going to be 30 minutes and we're going to talk about the efficiency, uh, key performance indicators and efficiency. Um, subsequent webinars, uh, one later in July and then one later um, in the early fall, we'll talk about some of the other uh, features and capabilities of, of the, this new version. So since we only have half an hour to spend on this, I'm going to move ahead and cover this uh, as, as um, quick as possible. So Vital Capacity Management um, is a software suite or a solution that uh, addresses all the different aspects of capacity management. So it, it take, covers everything from performance monitoring, so getting or acquiring data about how the infrastructure or the systems and the applications have been performing um, based on observations uh, or monitoring of, of, of those uh, to analyze that data to find the, the reason or the root cause for different performance issues uh, over to doing forecasting and planning based on that data. So doing trend analysis or capacity modeling based on that data. The solution covers all this. It's divided into some uh, number of components, but um, they all interact and, and together they, you know, address the, the, the capacity management um, discipline as a, as a whole. So when we decided to build the capacity management or design vital capacity management some two, two years ago, um, we did a, a major refactoring of our um, previous solution and uh, launched it as Vital Capacity Management. We had a couple of key objectives that we wanted to make sure that we addressed. Uh, first of all, we wanted it to be have a simple and intuitive user interface. Uh, we believe that more people should do capacity management or be involved in capacity management. And the one of the ways to achieve that is to make it simple, to make the learning curve uh, a bit more attractive and to, to invite, you know, people from the business side, from not, um, you know, only the diehard capacity management uh, people to to work with the solution, but, but actually push it out to a wider group of users. Number two was to deliver useful insights out of the box. That goes along the vein of the, of the first one. So, you know, having less experienced people using the solution and benefit from the solution, we need to provide general recommendations, uh, and advice out of the box. Simple to set it up, should be up and running quickly. Not You shouldn't have to spend weeks or months configuring and calibrating the solution to get, get results from it. So it should be out of the box, simple to use. It needs to be scalable and extensible. Um, you want to be able to start small perhaps, and then as you grow, add more resources to the architecture and by that scale it out, uh, rather than you know having to buy the, or having to have the, 
provision for the for the end goal um, when you start using it. And then we wanted to, to provide this in a single package. Um, it's it's hard at the time of of buying the solution or deciding the solution to under, know exactly which parts you're going to use and which parts you're going to benefit from. So it's easier if we have this as one single package that does all of the things that we uh, described in the previous slide um, in a simple way so that it fits together and it, it makes it easy to use. So what we came up with was a solution that is um, it's made up of a number of different components. We have a component called key performance indicators. That's the one we're going to focus on today. It's a high level tool that allows you to um, quickly assess the health risk and efficiency of your system. It's not meant for root cause analysis or, or, or you know, to provide all the details. It's more around providing awareness to people or awareness to the users about certain problems or certain situations that they should deal with. We have a troubleshooting component called performance monitor, which is the, the view to the real-time data that we collect uh, all the down, way down to process level. So it allows you to find the root cause behind different behaviors, exactly which process or which workload or which container or which VM was causing a specific problem and what resource they were running out of, et cetera, et cetera. We have a component called capacity plans, which allows you to do forecasting and planning. So predictive analytics based on the data. So we build capacity models of the data using the empirical data that we've collected or we uh, acquire from third party sources and build models of those systems and allows you to, that allows you to answer what if questions like, what if I grow this workload with a certain percentage? What if I migrate from this? existing platform to a brand new one with slightly different um, characteristics. What will happen to my workloads if I do or if I do that or my application, my response times, etc. And then in addition to those, we also have a report component called automated analytics, which allows you to create dashboards and reports of any of the data that we acquire or any of the data that we've analyzed or and created. Uh, or all the insights that we've created through our analytics. Um, create custom content, build your own type of reports. You can automate that and schedule those to, to be available to users, uh, either you know, proactively push them out or they can be published into a portal framework or you know, wherever you, you want to put that data. So those are the components of vital capacity management and this is the solution. What we've done, um, in the last two years, as I referred to, is that we've we built the framework or the, the, the base components of vital capacity management over two releases in 2018. And since then we've we've released in March, we released a, a an update to that where we added quite a lot of new features and capabilities. And now in July we're all, we're releasing a sec second set of of um, new features and capabilities. And this is gonna go on each quarter. We're gonna you know, release an, an update where we add more and more features to this. Um, so the two first releases allowed us to build this architecture runway that, that gives us a lot of um, momentum now. So in, in the quarterly releases we have, there's quite a lot of content in those and it's quite easy for us to add new features to those as you will see in the future. In this new release, version 2.4, um, these are the main themes or main capabilities that we've added. We've added out-of-the-box support for Azure. You were able to do that before, bring in data from Microsoft Azure, public cloud, but now it's out of the box. So we have a ready-made integration that you can use, uh, and then you can use that Azure data across the whole solution and, and uh, analyze those types of systems and et cetera, et cetera. Same way as you can with all the other platforms that we support. Uh, we've improved our um, high resolution data collection and how you can analyze that data. Uh, we've added some 
new capabilities that allows you to keep that data separate from the baseline uh, monitoring data that you collect. Uh, so we have a, a slightly different approach to it than we've had in the first couple of releases of PCM. Uh, we'll cover that in a, in a later webinar, but um, it's a very interesting feature that we will continue to develop and in subsequent releases it will be um, have be in an even more potent way of, of looking at high resolution data. We've created uh, workload mechanisms uh, that we, this is something we used to have back in the TeamQuest days. Now we've, we've caught up with that. So we now add workload and process data reduction to our data collection mechanism. Um, we're adding an efficiency indicator to KPI. Key performance indicators was this uh, high level um, view that allowed you to, to uh, look at the large population of systems at, at once and uh, assess whether there were any problems. Uh, so we've added an efficiency view to that. This is where we, I'll describe that later in this session uh, a bit more in detail. And then we also added a demand calendar object so that you can record data about future demand uh, in your environment and um, make, you know, record that somewhere and make everyone using the capacity plans components or making uh, key performance indicators aware of those uh, specific demands that been, has been forecasted. There's also a group of other features that we've added, uh, but we're not going to, I'm not going to bring them up here. So we're going to focus on the efficiency aspect of KPIs today. So as part of that, we're also going to talk a bit in general about how to do IT cost optimization and what are the best practices and what are the best ways of doing that. And then we'll, we'll uh, end that off by, by showing you um, a demo of, of how efficiency, uh, the efficiency scores in KPI looks like. So IT cost optimization as a discipline. Uh, so it's basically about squeezing the cost of, of IT without jeopardizing the quality of the service or by, by um, you know, putting that at risk. So one part of it is to avoid duplication and redundancy in your environment. That's normally the responsibility of portfolio management in an organization. So to make sure that you don't have, you know, multiple services, multiple applications providing uh, identical or similar uh, capabilities, etc. or uh, over time, you know, the, the, the goal must be to, to consolidate, consolidate those to fewer applications and by that avoiding duplicating uh, capabilities and features across and, and using more resources than necessary. The other one is making sure that you don't have dormant or outdated assets in your environment. Um, that could be part of capacity management in a way, but primarily that would be the responsibility of lifecycle management. So understand, you know, what what are the assets that are outdated that should be end of life and, and you know, put to sleep. And then um, you have those circumstances or those occasions where um, the consumption of resources or the demand for resources doesn't really match the, the real um, demand. Um, and in those cases, capacity management should be there to safeguard those and make sure that you're actually using your resources in the, the best possible way. Um, if your forecasted behavior doesn't turn out to be true or be, be you know, the reality doesn't match those, you need to recognize that, you need to identify that and, you know, reclaim, or repurpose those resources, et cetera. So capacity management is involved in an IT cost, overall IT cost optimization. It plays a, a big part in, in doing that or achieving that uh, cost optimization. So what does IT cost optimization entail? Uh, there's a number of proactive measures that you can take, you know, before the cost is actually incurred. Um, you can have policies and guidelines around how to provision resources, what type of resources that are allowed, and and you know what are the the different checkpoints that you need to go through, etc., before you you hand out or provision new resources. Um, you should probably enforce some sort of standard configurations, small, medium, large, T size, T-shirt size type of configurations. Um, how those looks look in detail will vary from from company to company, organization to organization, etc. And they may actually change over time, and based on your experience, you may you know modify those over time, etc. But um, 
it's always a good idea to have a standard set of configurations that you allow and not ask the user to define for themselves you know what type of resources they are going to look they they would like to have um and then having activity based cost allocation so allocating cost in relationship to to actual consumption will always make the consumers a bit more thoughtful about how they request resources so long term that's really you know probably the best and the most efficient way of of controlling how much resources are being provisioned and that those resource provi uh, provisioned resources are in line with with the actual demand so implementing activity based cost allocation is always a good idea but sometimes you know charge back where you charge the different business units or the different consumers for what they actually use is too hard to sell or it's too much of a cultural change um so normally you know it's not from nothing going from from having nothing to a full chargeback system is not realistic especially for traditional on-prem it in public cloud all this becomes different because in public cloud you know you you pay for what you use and it's much easier to allocate that cost across different business units but for these on-prem uh, data center resources that are uh, traditionally maybe you know owned by someone and or you don't necessarily charge out exactly based on activity to your different customers so when you do this um, you have to normally go through this maturity steps that where you start by by just observing you know how much resources are being used by the different tenants or the different customers or different business units in your organization and you, you know so simple usage metering and and then you can present back them some sort of percentage of of how they're being used and it, it, at least get some level of, of awareness around this the next step is doing show back where you take the running costs you actually analyze the running cost of, of your data center and then you um, multiply that by usage to at least so to get the, the, the actual numbers for you know how much is IT support or IT um, for this specific business unit or for this specific service costing us and and then you know put that in perspective to what is the business uh, what is the the benefit of, of that service or what is the, the overall benefit of this uh, business unit and then ultimately you get to a, a level where you practice a, a, have a, a practice around chargeback where you send out invoices and you have the different your different tenants or your different customers pay for what they actually use so when you implement this it's important to have you know it needs to be fair it needs to be should be a system that that uh, is consistent so that you actually it's it's gives you a, a a platform to to evaluate your services in the proper way so it's it's not a trivial task and it, it normally takes some time to get to this point so it, it's this you know maturity curve that you have to work your way through in terms of corrective actions so what you can do after you've actually the cost has already been incurred and you are you're you're faced with with a situation where you have infrastructure in your data center or in, in the cloud that are being used by your services um, you need to constantly run a discovery for wasted resources to try to analyze you know where there is wasted resources and try to address that uh, reclaiming those resources or repurposing those uh, resources um, you have to have policies for that reclamation and right sizing um, because if you've already given it away to the business units or the, the application owners etc it's not a trivial task to reclaim that so you need to upfront you need to have a policy for who owns what and who is is allowed to do what in in your operation so that you can actually correct your mistakes afterwards otherwise you're 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 bound to those mistakes and you can never you know turn things around and then this needs to be a continual improvement process we talked about this before that the standard configurations that you have on the proactive side those are probably over time you'll probably find better ways of, of offering those or making corrections to the how those are offered etc so you have to have this continual improvement process you also need to understand so when you get a forecast about growth for a, 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 a time period and you provision based on that forecast you need to follow up and make sure that you go you know, 
compare the the turnout with with the forecast and understand if there are any systematic errors in that in those forecasts etc and compensate for those you need to assign probability measures based on timelines etc 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 so you never finish with this really it's it's a continual improvement process that needs to be worked out all the time and you need to save as much data about this as possible so you can do the full blown analysis afterwards and compare the outcome with with the prognosis etc to understand and, and to better learn about your systems so this is it cost cost optimization in a nutshell so if we focus on the discovery of wasted resources because that's really where one of the areas where you really need a tool that can do this for you in a safe way in an automated way in a scalable way um, so what we've created is a view in key performance indicators that does this for you so it, it analyzes and reports on the efficiency of the infrastructure being used so key performance indicators for those of you who aren't aware or haven't seen it before it's basically a, a view what or a, a window to all your systems or in your environment so you can analyze thousands of systems to uh, identify the few ones that needs attention so all the systems are analyzed and then ordered by severity so you can focus on the ones that where you're going to hurt the most or where you're wasting the most resources etc um, it's focused on providing some sort of rag metrics or simplified metrics uh, you know good bad um, red amber green whatever you call them but um, it's more of sort of an indicator of where deep analysis is required it's not the full-blown analysis um, you can also aggregate these individual systems or individual infrastructure items up to group levels to symbolize things like services or business lines etc to make it more uh, useful so We've had the health indicator for quite a while. So it looks at how a service or components has been performing over the last 24 hours. You have a risk component where you look at uh, the same way as health, but into the future. So forecasting six months ahead, uh, is there any um, performance issues or, or capacity issues in the six coming months? And then we've added uh, an efficiency view to this. So looking, for any unused resources that it can be re reconfigured or repurposed to lower the cost of your IT operation. So the way this looks is a view like this where you order have the systems, um, one system per line uh, grouped. For each one, you anal we analyze the activity levels for CPU, disk IO and network IO um, with thresholds that can be tweaked if you want to, but out of the box, it, it should give you a, a fairly good idea about how those systems are being used um, we use percentile filters to reduce the impact of outliers if you have a single one or a few single outliers that can completely throw you off track um, so we've we've implemented those to to sort of cleanse the data and make sure that the data is, is um, we're uh, we're analyzing the data in the right way um, you have multiple time range which sort of provides you this context for how long the system has been unused so not just focusing on here and now but going back as long as one year so you can understand the, the business cycles or the cyclicality of events so making sure that the system has actually been used unused for a, a long enough time you know it's probably a good idea before you you turn it off or you you uh, decide to downsize the system um, we're also counting the the number of uh, unused or used days uh, when we aggregate the data, so we have an understanding of, you know, how many days have this system according to our the rules that we've set up or the the rules that you tweaked. How many days have this system been unused? Um, you have a shortcut to performance monitoring capacity plans from here. So if you want to do a, a drill down and look at the system in detail or understand exactly why this is, you can um, do that di directly from here without going through through the, the start screen and having to, to look up this system again. We do this for all the different platforms, quote unquote. Uh, so Linux, Windows, VMware, AWS, Azure, IX, and Solaris. So all the platforms that we cover uh, with our data collectors or our um, provision or our federation of other data sources you can also uh, use uh, search and filters to 
manage the if you have a larger scope so if you have you know all your different systems in here and it's thousands of systems you can you know limit the the scope based on just groups or systems you can filter out on the name on names etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, this is not just for efficiency this also applies to the health and risk scores so you can uh, search and filter those as well and then you can you know, do time-based drill down to see which days or month, if that is the scope, uh, that the system was unused. So if you were, if you're looking at the last 30 days, you'll get one notification per day. If you look at the last seven days, you'll get uh, more granular indicators, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, you can, you know, drill down if there is a if there is an indicator of an unused system, you can drill down and see exactly which days that that was happening, and if there is a systematic or seasonality behavior that that keeps repeating etc across these different systems so it's a very powerful way of analyzing systems and finding those uh, inefficient or uh, systems or systems that are being not being used efficiently so to summarize vital capacity management as we talked about is this um, integrated solution product that have, consists of four different components, um, all connected to this data management and analytics frameworks that allows you to acquire data from quite a lot of different sources. So we can use our own native data collectors to bring the data. We can also integrate with third-party data sources. We can analyze everything from servers to over storage network on their servers. Could be a, a, a virtual machines or VMs running, could be containers, could be public cloud services, could also be metrics from you know, things like data center, et cetera, that, that can also um, be useful for that. So all that is available across all the different components. You can do logical groupings of this data. We saw that in key performance indicators. So you can extract definitions from a service catalog or a CMDB, et cetera, and apply that to the data. So not just in key KPI, but in performance monitor, capacity plans, and automated analytics, you can use those groupings to report on the data. So to symbolize things like services or applications, et cetera. On the predictive analytics side, we can do these um, advanced forecasts of, of or predictions of future behavior based on, on your the what-if scenarios you defined. Um, in this release, we're introducing a demand calendar, which allows you to do more business-aware capacity management. So you can add business events in a calendar format so that to make the users of the application or make the, the de default behavior of some of the components take those things into account when, when uh, forecast is being made. So you record data about a, a future business demand and if that is then covered by the analysis you're doing, it will be suggested or in, included into that uh, into that analysis. So it's a, it's a way of, of collecting all that data in one place. Um, so this is what I had for you today. So Main focus was on key performance indicators. We will have a couple of more sessions for this release talking about, uh, the next one is gonna be about the Azure and how we get data from Azure and how you can use that data for analysis. And then in a subsequent um, webinar, we will talk a bit more about our new data collection capabilities, the high resolution data and the workload mechanism, et cetera, that we've introduced in version 2.4. Um, we're running out of time here, so we don't really have time for any questions. If you've posted any questions in the chat windows, uh, we'll get back to you on those. Um, if you have other questions for me or you want to have a, a you know, follow-up on this session, um, you see my email address here at the bottom of the screen, so you can you know, just shoot me an email and I'll promise to get back to you uh, as soon as possible. So thank you everyone very much for your attention and uh, have a great rest of the day.